Brian Fritz here for BetweenTheRopes.com. Joining me today, my guest, Jeremiah Riggs. We've last seen him on uh, Tough Enough, uh, trying to get a spot in WWE. Uh, Jeremiah, thanks for the time. How's everything going these days? Yeah, man, everything is uh, going good. I appreciate actually your time for, uh, you know, giving me a call and being on your show. Everything's going good. You know, I'm uh, just back, back here in Mississippi. Uh, just, just living life, man. You know, uh, been been busy uh, cutting the crops and uh, in the gym pumping some weights and, you know, just staying ready for anything that, that comes along, brother. How does it feel now that you're not in front of the cameras because uh, you've done Ultimate Fighter, you've done Tough Enough, you've done a couple other uh, reality shows? Does it feel weird almost when the cameras aren't on you these days? <laughs> yeah, man, it does. Uh, you know, actually, uh, it, it's something that, you know, that you you, you become immune to. You know, I've actually, I, I, I love I love the camera, man. You know, I, I always, <laughs> you know, the, the red light to me is always on, you know, but it's just a part of just being myself. Um, I've had a lot of great opportunities and, uh, you know, I take, I take advantage of them. Um, and you know, it is, it, it is a little weird sometimes waking up, not having that camera right in your face or, you know, it's, it, 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 it's awesome. And, uh, you know, hope, hopefully, you know, you know, somewhere down the road that, you know, I, I you know, someone will see something, give me a call back or, or you know, something, something, something will happen. Can you ever get used to having the cameras around you as much as they have been twenty four seven when you're on those reality type shows? Oh yeah, man. It, it, to me, I mean, if I was to step out of the car right now and there was a camera right there, you wouldn't. It wouldn't. It, you're gonna get the same Jeremiah Riggs as, as you're gonna get any day I wake up without a camera. Uh, it, you get used to it. It's actually. It's almost like sometimes whenever you get it, uh, you know, when you're you're there. A lot of times, you know, it actually just becomes just becomes a part of it. Uh, you know, you, you get used to it. And actually, sometimes forget that they're even around you. So, what was it that attracted you to want to get into wrestling and uh, eventually make it onto uh, the Tough Enough show? Well, honestly, you know, I, I've told a lot of this. I never, never really had a a, a niche or whatever to get into it uh just a lot of my fans and um uh, management team so people you know really came came up to me with the idea of saying you know we like your personality i think there's something bigger out there for you know you, you just got this this hellacious personality and you know you're just you're you're, you're you know everybody that i that everybody have talked to me everybody has always said good things and you know which i mean you know i've always respected and looked up to that and uh I said, you know, you ought to, you need, you ought to try to go into pro wrestling. Just a character like you, I think, would would uh, really blow the spot up, and and uh, really could become something big. And I, mean, I never thought about it. You know, I asked, got asked a few times, like, well, what do you think about that? And I said, man, you know, yeah, I would do it in a heartbeat. Uh, just never had the opportunity, you know. Especially, you know, like I always say, coming up, how I came up, you know, never would have dreamed I would be in the shoes I'm in now. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it just happened. And, uh, you know, like, you know, even before then, you know, uh, I'd set up some meetings with TNA just to kind of really just fill it out to see what it was a little bit more about. You know, I watched it when I was a kid and growing up. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to to it than what meets the eye, but it, it's, a, it's a big entertainment industry. I mean, you're talking about the, one of the biggest forms of entertainment in the world. And just being a part of that itself is, is a huge accomplishment. And, um you know, it was something that I said, well, you know, I'll give it a shot, you know. And as, as you know, I went on to, you know, seeking out, you know, how to do it and what what, what the business was like and get, even getting on Tough Enough, I really became to, to, to kind of, you know, really not saying I've always loved the sport, but it made me have that, that, uh, that, that other love that I think that whenever you find it, you respect it a lot more. You know, it's not something that I grew up wanting to do, but as I've, gotten into the business i was like man you know this is this is a lot different than what i thought and it's a lot of fun and i really i really love it and i could see myself doing this so you know that's just a little bit of how i you know um came up in it and um you know like i said you know i i, I hope that i can find a, a a home or a spot for it but you know you just never know i mean you know it's just a part of the business politics and everything goes along with it and um we'll just have to see what happens you know uh but uh, but i definitely i love it and um have a have a lot of respect for it now you said that you uh, had originally set up some meetings 
uh, with mm-hmm. TNA. Did they, did they talk to you at that time? Yeah, you know, uh, Terry Taylor was at the time was the you know vice president of uh, talent, and um, you know um, my management team had said it, you know talked to him and had several meetings with him. You know, really, you know, questioned both. You know, him asking me questions, me asking him questions, just really filling each other out, just wanting to know, you know, like, hey, man, you know, um, you know, they sent me, I, I was went to a few of their events just to watch, you know, and, and just to get, really get back in it, you know what I'm saying? Like, just really see, you know, feel that, just make, you know, really that energy and, and just to see, you know, just an up-close uh, part of it, what it was. And, um, you know, and, and actually just right, when we were in the mix of talking it and and then in the back and forth with me fighting, you know, the tough enough deal came up and I was like, boom, you know, I, I landed it. And uh, like I said, I was like, there was no looking back. I would just move forward. I mean, TNA, WWE, you know I mean? They're, they're both. I mean, you're talking about, you know, top two organizations in the business. You can't go wrong with being in either spot. Now we all saw you on Tough Enough, where you ended up uh, coming down to the final three. What were your, what all did you take away from from that experience once it was all over? You know, I'd, I'd always, no matter how you finish a race or or how I finish companies, always, even if it was dead last, always look at something as if it was something that you would look at something as negative. Oh, you know, you came up short. I always try to get something I can learn something from it, you know, and then, and, and, um, to, to me, I took away from that, you know, I came into something that I wasn't born up in or never had, you know, any experience in and just, just having the form of athletic ability that I have, I knew I could do it. I knew, you know, there was nothing that they could throw at me that I ain't never really seen before, or, you know, any toughness, especially, you know, coming from Ranger Battalion and then just, uh, the sports I played in, you know, you know, high school, college, or whatnot, and uh, oh, I took something good out of it. I took, you know, it was a good learning experience. I mean, I got to meet the the, the best in the business, uh, really listen to what they got to say. I mean, I took a lot in, um, and, you know, you, of course, you not only do you take it in, but you, you know, later down the road or in the, in the forms of doing what I do, you know, I try to put that into uh, to what, to what it is, and, um, just try to, you know, like I said, keep that positive attitude and just keep moving forward because there's no moving back for me. You know, there really ain't no looking back. You know, I leave it all out there. Um, I, I put in 100%, and and I did it, you know. Um, no matter how I finished, you know, I, I finished in the top three and never once was in the bottom three. Yeah. And I was going against guys that were veterans that's been doing the wrestling as long as I've been fighting, you know, five, six-plus years. And uh, I walked away with a big smile on my face because I knew – you know, somewhere, it, whether I were to never, you know, get a call or them saying, you know, whatever, I did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I accomplished what most people couldn't and most people dreamed of. And uh, to me, that's a big accomplishment. Now, I want to keep moving forward, um, but I also look at it as, you know, man, that's a hell of an experience. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward, you know, like, I, you know, I've, I've done the tryouts and stuff like that. And you never know, like I said, in this business, you don't never know what's going to happen. But uh, I hope for the best, you know, I really want to pursue this and uh, just, you know, man, going no guts, no glory, man. Just go in there, uh, balls of wall. Anyone that watched the show knows that Stone Cold was very hard on everybody. Um, and he was hard on you as well. But at the same time, it sure seemed like there was some kind of connection there between the two of you did did you feel that way and if so how quickly into the process did you feel um kind of that that relationship with stone cold that was different from everybody else's relationship with him man i think me and stone cold's relationship was hit it off right at the bat i mean i think a lot of i look at just saying where we you know just that you know just the things that we do a lot of similarities and you know what I mean, the hunting and, and the country's boy side of things. Uh, you know, I think that took in a lot to you know uh, being a lot similar. You know, I ain't saying I'm 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 stone cold, but you know what I'm saying, like just that vibe and just that you you can kind of look at someone and you ain't got to say a lot. You can just be like, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? I yeah. think that with me and him was, you know, yeah, I get it. You know, he gets it, and I wasn't really didn't have to 
speak a lot of words. We we just got it. And uh, to me, the the relationship that I think that we had were, was actually a good one. You know, I mean, I like him. You know, I, man, I, he was on a list of anybody I've ever wanted to meet, no matter what I was doing. He was always at the top. I was like, man, I really like it, dude. If I could ever meet someone, I always said I'd love to meet Stone Cold. And then that just that coming true, man, it was, you know, I really I want to get to know him. And, uh, man, I tell you what, my I, I was not let down one bit. Do you stay in touch with him? Yeah, you know, I've actually talked to him since the show. I mean, I've talked to him a couple of times. I'm even talking to him about going hunting, you know. Uh, you know, we'll, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get together and, and go shoot some hogs or something. Man, I, I told him, you know, we we got to we got to talking about hunting, and uh, and I told him, I said, all right now, you know, uh, I'll hold you to it. So, <laughs> say we gonna go, <laughs> I'm ready. I don't think I won't drive out to Texas, and uh, you know, I mean, it was a good, you know, good relationship, and uh, I, I like I said, I, I I would love to keep in touch with him and actually keep. Keep that friendship, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, definitely, man. He's a stand-up guy, and ain't got nothing but good things to say about Stone Cold. Do you? And, and just, yeah. But that attitude he got's real, you know. It ain't. Yeah, you, know, you can anybody can turn up, turn it up a notch. But you know, with him, man, it's just that what you see is what you get, and uh, either you either like him or you don't. And I think that with me, even the way I was brought up, you know, I, I look at myself the same way. And uh, you know that's just that's just a you know part of who he is and, and what he does. Do you stay in touch with Luke because the the two of you were pretty close in the show as well? Oh yeah, man! I actually talked to him uh, what two nights ago. We we talk all the time, even since after show. We've gotten together and uh, hit the river. I've flown up to Maine, and we man we had a really good time. And uh, you know he's he's a, he's a good buddy, uh, uh, real good guy. And uh, man, we 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 do stay in touch. Just kind of seeing where each you know what what's going on with each other and, and just you know keeping in touch and um you know like i said uh man he's a, he's a stand-up guy and I, I wish nothing but the best for him and uh you know we'll, we'll see what happens i think you know uh he has a good i would say he's got a good future in this business you know he's he's been doing it for a while and he's he's, he's good he's good at what he does and i'd like to see him man i'd like to see him on raw or smackdown or somewhere i really would uh well, yeah, we keep in touch. You know, we we kept that friendship. You know, it wasn't just you know, it wasn't that wasn't for cameras. You know, that was mm-hmm. you know, that was real. And uh, you know, I like I like the old boy. Outside of yourself, not winning, surprised that he did not win the competition. Yeah, I was. You know, uh, when it came down to it, when I you know got called off, I I told him, I said, man, you know, just, uh, right before I left, I said, what's yours to take? Don't hold it, don't hold nothing back. You know, you you, you put it put it in the bag and seal it, seal the deal, brother. And it was unfortunate the way it turned out, but you know, I, it is what it is. You know, it does just sometimes the cards don't always fall fall in your hands, uh, and you just gotta, you know, like I said, take them how they're dealt and uh, do something with it. Um, and then, you know, I don't really have much to say about what, what how the choice went because to me, I, I really don't get it. You know, you you watch from episode one to the last episode, it it can. It gets squirrely to me on 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 the decisions that were made. Uh, I'm, I'm I really can't say I agree with it, but you know I'm not the only one saying that. And, you know, I mean, but that that's my opinion, and and you know that's just a, that's just one more opinion that you know it, re- it really don't matter what me or anybody else thinks. You know, they they pick who they wanted. And, it's just, you know, the hell with it. <laughs> now, I know that uh, some people kind of raised their eyebrows when Rima was on there and what she brought to the table. Um, when it came to the, the women on there, um, did you guys, did you in particular see any of them as, you know, serious contenders to win the show? You know, I, I got asked this question by uh, one or two of them. Uh, actually, come up and they said, uh, you know, hey, Jeremiah, what, uh, do you think, do you think a girl's got a chance at winning this? And my exact answer was not a chance, not a chance in hell as long as I'm here. I said, "There's, you know, y'all just, y'all just be lucky, y'all just be happy to be here and do what you can do to be the top girl, you know, the female. But uh, as long as I'm standing here, it ain't, it ain't gonna be over me, um, you know. And and to me, you know, when you take, not saying that a woman can't 
you know, that's nothing against the, the females, but whenever you're looking at a competition and you're going off, you know, it's a, it's a different level. Um, I always said, well, damn, if they're going to do that, they might as well just have a show for divas. It's like the girls all bash it out. You know, I, sometimes I, I mean, and there's a girl, there was a girl, you know, a female that won one of the tough enoughs. You know, I'm not saying mm-hmm. it can't happen, but I was, to me, I was like, man, if I'm here, it ain't fixing to happen again. <laughs> and, um, but that, that, that was kind of odd to me for, for them to go through the site, you know what I'm saying, and, and actually be in a competition with, with uh, with what they were going up against, and but then again, you never know what anybody's looking for. But I, I believe if they were going to do the both, then they I think they should have separated them. Now, after the show, I know you went down to Florida Championship Wrestling for a week, and yep. my understanding is things didn't work out the way you wanted. Explain what exactly happened with FCW. Well, you know, I ain't gonna say the things that didn't happen what I wanted to happen. I never, I never said really anything like, you know, hey, I looked at anything negative. I went down there and had had a damn good time. Uh, just like I'll tell anybody down there, you know, I'm I'm not sorry for anything I did or said. Um, you know, uh, we had some great training. You know, it was a tryout. Um, you know, to me, uh, at some point, I'm kind of thinking, well. Get gum, you know. I just got done with the show. Finished, you know. Is a tryout really necessary? Not saying I would not wasn't against it. You know, I'm gonna give my all in doing what I do. But you know, when you sign. You know, they already signed. Uh, I know they signed the Ariana. I mean, she she didn't last one night, and you know they signed her. You know, like I said, things sometimes things don't add up. But there was a little complications, and and you know, I mean, I, you know, I wrote an article about it, and and I wasn't. Uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, I burnt my bridges. I bashed the WWE. I didn't bash the WWE. I, well, I, I've I've never seen anything but good things about the WWE. All I said was sometimes the way things got handled down there was 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 BS. Um, you know, me and Dusty Rhodes had gotten a few words, but you know, like in that business, you know, it ain't nothing personal. It's just business. I mean, you got you got grown men doing what they do, and you know. This ain't this ain't no fairy tale, man. You gonna you gonna have you know people say this and say that, uh, but it come down to a promo. I cut a promo. I got um, I got asked, you know, I got told um, on their promo days, you got one minute, go have some fun. They'll cut us a promo. Well, I got to cut my promo, and um, uh, you know, I got stopped one time. I de- I dropped the f f bomb and. Uh, you know, no big deal. We're not in front of kids. We're in front of the group of guys. You know, all the all the students there. You know, we're having a good time, and it was all a big, big, big joke. You know, we got to laughing about it. You know, I guess well, you know, hey, we're gonna send this up with your child. You know, just kind of, you know, watch. I was like, my bad. You know, I got a little tongue twisted there, and I I just let it loose. Um, no big deal. And then after that, I finished my deal. Kind of tossed the microphone over my shoulder, and I guess someone's panties got in a wand about it. Um. Uh, Got called, and we we got back back to the office, and just the way I thought the things was handled, I'm not saying it, you know, you, they took me in the back, you know, which is fine, but uh, just some of the things that were said or some of the things that went down, I didn't agree with because you know the only rules that I had was you got one minute, cut a promo, have fun, just just be yourself. I didn't hear anything about hey, don't do this, don't do that, and it's hard to. For me to tell someone I'm sorry for something I did not know, you know, what to do or not to do. And I think that anybody would agree with that. If you're cut loose and say, hey, bam, let me hear it. It's all a learning experience. Like I told them even after the deal, I said, look, man, I'm here to learn. Slap me on the wrist when I do bad. You tell me what I did wrong. We'll fix it. I'm not here. You know, of course, their idea was saying, oh, I had a bad attitude. And I had, uh, it seemed like I came in there with something to prove. Be damn right I had something to prove. I'm a rookie to this game. You know, everybody's already pinpointing me, you know, thinking, you know, well, you know, we'll see what he's got. You know, he thinks she's this and that. Well, well, dude, you know, what else should I think? I'm a professional athlete. I'm going to come in there and show you that I belong in this sport. It's not a, a matter of fact if I got something to prove, because I do. I got something to prove saying, you know, hey, you know, for everybody out there running their, their that yap, uh, that, you know, you, uh, he just wants to do you know, TV thing, he can't do this. Well, can ain't a word in my vocabulary, and the thing about it is I did do it, and I did it in the way of, of me. 
And now I can't help that the way, you know, I talk or, or my maybe my expressions come off as a bad attitude, but just exactly like I told them right there, you know, look, man, I'm having a dead gum good time. Um, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, hey, you know, my bad for doing whatever. I said, but it's hard for me to tell you I'm sorry for something I did not know I can or can't do. And that was about, that was the end of it. Hell, the next night, you know, Dusty come up and shook my hand. I shook his. And, hey, man, how you doing? Whatever, that's cool. To me, it was squash. I didn't know it was going to turn into that. But whenever you have, say, yourself calling me, doing an interview, or fan, thousands of people hitting me up all the time, I'm not going to tell, so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there the way it is. You know, if every, if all your friends, you know, that to me, that's what, you know, your fans want to know. I think they deserve the right to be told, you know, hey, look, here's what happened, guys. You know, if I'm if I'm in the business, I am. If I ain't, well, I ain't. But uh, this is what went down, like it or not. You know, the way I look at it is, you know, hey, man, who's everybody talking about? They sure ain't talking about anybody else from the show. Would you like to go back to uh, FCW to train? Oh, hell yeah. Man, if, if Ty Bailey and him called me right now, I got asked if Johnny Ace called me and wanted me to come. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I, and, and it's nothing about, you know, hold no, I don't hold no grudge. I don't have no bad attitude. There's a lot of good group of guys down there. Now, there's a lot of people down there that might not agree with what I got to say, but, you know, maybe that should have been, you know, put at the table. What I'm saying is it should have been put at the table. You know, you know, if you, if, yeah, people do certain things a certain way, but if you don't know which way they're doing them and you come out there gun, I'll come out there guns and blazing. And the reason why is I'm not afraid to, to make a mistake or mess up. Now, I'm not like the 60 other people they got down there. I don't look like them. I don't talk like them. I'm not going to perform like them. Now, if they're looking for, for everybody to be the same, you're not looking for me. You know, if you're looking for something different, and I believe I can stand out above everybody, I'm going to do what, I, what I'm capable of doing, and I'm going to go out there and leave it all out there. But I'm going to give you 100%. Now, if I mess up, just let me know, and we'll fix whatever needs to be fixed. But, you know, you can't expect a man to be himself when, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be a clone, you know, and I'm sure not going to kiss any ass. And what I mean by that is, I'm not going to beg, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm sure another thing I've also told myself, I'm not here to waste your time, and I sure don't want no one wasting mine. So just like I, I tell you or tell anybody else, if someone, they walk up, shook my hand and said, hey, we love you, you know, everything. We just ain't got a spot for you right now. We'll keep in contact. I'm going to shake your hand and tell you, man, I appreciate the opportunity. Just like I told Ty Bailey and myself on the phone, I said, well, yes, y'all chance you know y'all don't want to use me right now and you know he said well the door's not closed you know still up well that's cool i'm gonna stay in shape i'm gonna stay ready for anything that's happened but i'm i'm not gonna sit around you know what i'm saying i'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna keep moving forward and um but i haven't had anything really bad come out of it i mean i've had a lot of good good uh good people say good things people say bad things but that's that's just life that's just anything you do but yeah, man, I'd love to be re back down at FCW or in the WWE and, and doing something, you know, I, I became a part of and something love to do. But if it don't happen, man, I just, you know, hell, I, you ain't going to cry over spilt milk, you know what I mean? Right. Because of some of the things that you have said, um, do you worry or do you think anybody is thinks, even though you, you think, hey, I put it out this way, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that, but do you at all worry that some people are going to have this? Concern, the thoughts about you that you have a bad attitude. Well, what what do you consider a bad attitude? I mean, you talking well, about like a stone cold bad attitude, a CM Punk bad attitude. I mean, I just, just mean that uh, people might think like you you say stuff because you're right. going to be honest about it. But you know how some people you can say, hey, you know what, you're just yeah. being honest about something. But other people say, well, you know, he's saying that, but he shouldn't say that. He's got a bad attitude. Yeah. Well, they because they look at it like, well, why would you say that, or what? Well, why would? You? Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, like I said, I'm I'm there to learn. I'm not there to, to hold anybody. You know, I'm not there. I don't I don't need anybody to hold my hand. All I need is, you know, you're there. You know, whenever you're training and you're learning, you're new to it. That's what you're there. That's what them coaches and stuff are there to do. I mean, they're their mentors. You know, I look up to them guys. And it was just like I told Dusty Rose and all of them. I said, Hey, man, this ain't nothing personal. It's just business. 
you know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm having a great time. And the thing about it is, is I'm not, you know, like I said, no dis. I didn't disrespect anybody. I'm not disrespecting this sport. I'm not disrespecting you. But you know, if you're gonna say what you're gonna say, give me some reason. But don't turn your back on me and walk away. You know, I think I, you know, like I told him, hold on, boss. I'm going I think I deserve a right to explain myself, and I'm gonna explain myself, and uh, you know, let you know, you know, how I feel about the situation, whether it's good or bad. I think you ought to, you know, hear me out. Now, you know, and I said, hey, we're good, but you know, maybe we're not. The thing about it is, is that's just, like I said, that's no more than just two two guys working things out. And some people might not work it because they got this. Well, they, some people call it respect, or they call it uh, help me find the word I'm trying to use. Or they, what is it, ethics or whatever they, mm-hmm. you know, whatever they use. That's cool and all, but that don't mean you know you lay down like a like an old tired dog and just you know deal with it you know what i'm saying i think that's the problem with a lot of people that's sometimes the problem with a lot of people not 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 you know that's why why are you there why have you been you know if you're so good and you know a lot of people might not speak up their mind but if you don't speak up and say hey i think i'm ready or you you gotta you gotta stay at it because a lot of people they're just gonna if you're con- if you're content on being where you're at you ain't never gonna go anywhere you know and to me it's not. I'm not content at where I want to be the best. I want to keep moving forward. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drill, drill, drill your ass. I'm gonna ask you questions. I'm gonna get in your face. You know, I'm here to learn, and I'm gonna do the best of my ability. That's the thing about. I'm, I'm gonna go get her. I'm not gonna sit back and, and wait. If you sit back and wait on somebody, you ain't never gonna get anywhere, anyways. And just like I've told him, I said, y'all waiting on me. Y'all backing up. You know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get up in up, up in your drill, and we we gonna do something. You know, and, and if by damn, if I can't do it, I'm going to give it one hell of a shot. And if I can't, you know, just say if it worked out to where I didn't, I'm going to walk away at my head here high because I know I, I left it all in there. And that's the thing. I'm leaving it all in there. I ain't, I won't look back. Have you been wrestling a lot uh, since the show? No, actually I haven't, man. I've, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, busting my butt out here. You know, I got a, you know, I got a business, man. You know, I, 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 we on the farm, you know, we cutting corn. You know, I said, I've been busy, but I, I keep myself in shape, you know, um, waiting on what's going on, you know. I mean, my, my guy, you know, Dutch, who I'm wondering, you know, he's in Nashville it's right now, and we keep we keep in touch and talk back and forth. It's hard for me to get up there right now, but, you know, that I'm not going to forget the basic things that I've learned, you know. I, I go over them in my head all the time, and, and you know, I, I'm not saying that I don't need ring time. I know I need ring time. I need a lot of ring time. But it's just one of them things that say, you know, I don't have it available to me right now. But I can. That don't mean I can't do things to stay in shape mm-hmm. and stay on top of what I've already, you know, you know, learned or, or, or already have, have have gotten myself to a point. You know, is that kind of a catch twenty two right now? Because you do have another business and that needs to be run. So that's the focus of your time. But for you right. to possibly get another opportunity, at WWE, or even if you were to pursue some with TNA, they might want you to say, "Well, we're hoping that you have improved since then. So you've gone out there, you've worked more, and you've gotten more time in the ring." But you're not able to do that because you've got the other business to run. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it could be a, a double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? But you got to do what you got to do. You know, I can't. You know, I got to put. You know, I got to. I got to put food on the table just like everybody else. You know, I got a. I got a family to feed and to take care of. So I mean, you got to. You know, I got. I can't just stop in motion and 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 like I said, you know, I, I've I've got to keep hustling and doing what I need to do. Uh, I look at it that way. I mean, this. Is not something that you know. Like I said, I, I know things like this take time. Look what I, I say. Look what I've done in eight weeks on on the show. You know, I think I from day one to the last day I was standing there. You're talking about crazy improvements. You know, I was always around. Oh, imagine what I could do getting paid to go to a training camp and stuff. You know, getting taken care of, investing a little time and money in. Imagine what I can do in six months. Yeah. Imagine what I can do in a year. I mean, they're investing. They invest time and money in a lot of people, and they release a lot of people. And yes. and I think that that's something that you know, with me, uh, you know, a little time, a little little investment, 
let's roll the dice and, and make some money and let's, let's make let's make something of it. But Thank- that's a but that's a but that's a that's a that's a a gamble they take on anybody. I believe from your number one superstar to to someone that you know never made. It. That's just a gamble that you know if they're willing to take it, they're willing to. If not, then they're not. I know you did some training with uh, Dutch Mantel. How was that experience? Oh man, Dutch is a great guy. You know, yeah. he you can learn so much uh, in so little a time with him. Even just just listening to him talk and, and just you know really paying attention to what's going on. Uh, He's got Dutch, some stories, man. Man, well, you know, even when I first, you know, even when I first got in there, you know, Dutch wouldn't let me get in the ring. He made he make me warm up with the guys and, and sit there and watch. And it's and I tell you, boy, it's agitating because you want to get in there and learn. But but the thing is, is you are learning. You, you're watching. You know, if you watch and learn, and that's that's one of the big thing I picked up even from the show from Dutch. I sat there and watched everything everybody was doing, and I didn't really get to do a lot with him. But for me, watching and the things that he was pointing out to watch for, when I got on that show, man, I was picking it up at the drop of a drop of a hat just by watching the little thing where people's hands go, where they, how to keep yourself safe. And man, I, and it come it came together. Everything that Dutch ever talked to me about, we'd sit down and have dinner, and he'd go over things, just talk about this and that. And whenever I got to listening to him, it all hit. Especially on that show, it hit me. It was just kind of like, man. Oh, 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 Dutch knows what you're talking about. You know, he's real smart. He, he's uh, real keen to saying, you know, pay attention. You know, it don't mean you got to be in the ring. They always say, you know, every bump you take, you know, you, everybody's got a bump card, you know, and they say every time you take a bump, it's like taking a year off your career or whatever. And they said, but that in, in this case, you watch, you learn. It becomes so smooth, and I get what he's saying, man. He's he's a real smart guy, you know. I would I would recommend him to anybody out there. Now, when it comes to uh, what's next for you in wrestling, is it still your goal to at some point um, be involved in wrestling on a full time basis, or is it one of those things where if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, uh, you're not going to worry about it. Yeah, you know it is. You know, I'm I'm hoping that I, I mean, I'm keeping in contact and seeing. You know, maybe if you know we're we're still able to. You know, like I said, to roll them the ice and get something going. I mean, I'm I'm really interested in that. Um, and I and you know, like I said, well, I'm gonna play the cards that are dealt to me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it give it a you know, a good shot at it. I've got to ask you about this. I'm looking at your Twitter picture. Yeah. Where did you take that picture? You're wearing a Johnny Cash style all black suit with the WWE Championship belt over your shoulder. <laughs> That was done uh, out on a shoot. That was done right on the show. Uh, uh, I forgot who took that picture, but I we were back there messing around and stuff. And uh, man, I that was just in that photo shoot we did. And I, I I threw the old belt around on my shoulder and said, I'm gonna have some fun with this. It was just just having fun, man. Just that's all that was. How many times do you wear a suit? <laughs> That was actually one of the first times I've worn a suit in a lot. I think the only other time I've ever worn a suit was at a wedding. Yeah. And I tell you what, it, I can get used to it, especially when they when they supplying you with stuff like that. That's something I'd, I'd wear a suit every day as long as they get putting it on your back. <laughs> really? I thought you. I thought the Southern guys from Mississippi, man, didn't like to wear suits. I mean, Brett Favre. I mean, he's always wearing his Wranglers and a T-shirt. Man, I tell you what, being in a suit's pretty, you know, it's pretty stylish. You know, I ain't got nothing against the suit. That don't mean them pants can't, a suit can't get dirty, too, you know what I mean? But uh, I don't mind, man. I, I you know, uh, my daddy always used to tell me, you need to buy your suit. Don't ever know when you need, you know, need a suit. And, uh, man, when I when they hooked me up with that, I was kind of like, boy, uh, daddy gonna, daddy'd be pretty impressed right now. Got that gum suit on and everything, you know. I'd like to see what he got to say about that. Yeah. And, uh, but, it, you know, it, it's cool, man. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm wearing, you know, Carhartt and Pearl Snap. You know, that, that's my that's my style. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'd put on the suit every now and then. It wouldn't hurt. Is your fighting career over? Uh, you know, I'm not real sure. You know, right now, you know, I really want to pursue the wrestling. Um, I've I've had offers and stuff, and I and I've I've turned stuff down because of the wrestling. You know, I I look at it being a a good bright career. Um, you know, I don't ever, I don't ever say never, and uh, that's something that it, it would it would have to it would, it would depend on, like I said, what's at the table. You know, uh, you know, like I said, man, now that you know, you, you got to eat. 
depends on money. You know, that that's a big aspect in all this thing. I mean, it's money, you know. Um, that's the way things are in the world mm-hmm. now. You know, if you ain't making no money, you, you ain't you ain't getting ahead. But it would actually depend on what was what was sitting in front of me at the time, you know. But right now, I really want to, you know, look forward into to the wrestling and, and get really, you know, getting involved with it and, and trying to really, really do something with it. If you could fight anybody, who would you like to fight? Well, I tell you what. I, I mean, I tell you, one of my a few about two years ago, who I really would have really loved to fight was Phil Baroni. Uh, I used to I watched him a lot, um, but I fight anybody. But I always I'll always like that style, that banging style. You know him, or you know just some of your your your, your veterans in the sport. You know. Uh, you know, I, I like I said. You know, I don't ever back down from any competition. But that was my recent opponent that I that I really wanted to wanted to fight just because I know how tough he is. And that song gun, you know, he'll get in there and bang it out. And I've always had a lot of respect for him. And I just always looked at you know, you got guys that look at your guys like that that are have been around and and, and you know, any any guy you know any guy like that's dangerous. You know, um, and it's just you know getting in there and. And then going at it, dude. And you know, all I like is go getters. You know, go out there and 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 just have a have a war and put on a dead gum show for the for the for the fans. So you've been on three reality shows now, including Daisy of Love, if you can believe that. Yep. Um, have you been approached again by anybody to be on a reality show? No, no, not not too much. You know, I mean, uh, I haven't been asked to do anything much. Uh, I wouldn't mind. I tell you, I've always enjoyed. I do. I do a lot of outdoor stuff. I, I've always wanted to, to try to get involved with maybe being on some some hunting shows or something like that. I've always had an interest in doing that, especially with all the stuff we we do. Um, you should get on Shawn Michaels' hunting show. Yeah, I heard he's got one, man. I ought to hit him up and go 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 sling some arrows or something. But uh, man, that would be something that you know. Uh, something that would be really cool to be a, a special guest or something like that on, you know, go go bag a big buck or or a hog or a ram or something, a turkey or whatever. That I think, hell, I think if they gave me an opportunity, I think I'd come up with a hell of a hell of a, a couple of seasons or, or a good good show itself. Uh, you know, we do I'm all, we always do a lot of frog grabbing and alligator catching and all kind of stuff down here, and uh, that's something I've always loved doing, but. Um, I haven't been really approached, you know, with anything. But if anybody ever did, I sure pitch some ideas to them. But you know, like I said, you know, I, I've got a lot of fish to fry. Now, but I, but I really would love to to keep keep you know do keep the wrestling right there and, and seeing where where I can go with that. You know? Speaking of reality shows, do you watch Swamp People? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good show. Man. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind getting out there and, and bagging some better, but. You know, I don't. The gators we catch, we don't. We we catch them by hand. We don't. We don't catch them on the rope and, and the hook. Well, you of should come. We can't keep them. Right. You <laughs> should come down here to Orlando, man. We got Gator Land going on over here. Yeah. Well, shit. I need to be. I need to get some. Uh, you got the number, man. Pass it out. Maybe someone want me to come down there and catch one with them. There you go. So, Jeremy. Me up. <laughs> well, I really appreciate the time. Uh, best of luck going forward, and uh, we'll see if uh, maybe you get back in the wrestling ring uh, sooner rather than later. So, uh, thanks again, yeah, man. Sure. I appreciate it. Man, no doubt, man. Like I said, I appreciate your time and um, and uh, everybody out there that, that listens and, and that supports me. I, I, I appreciate it. And, you know, uh, all the fans and all the support, it really means a lot, and a little goes a long way. And you know, we'll just see where, where it goes from here. Sounds good. Thanks again. Thanks, brother.